Hi, Data Ben here. Now we're going to look at the dictionary object in VBA. So what is the dictionary object and why is it useful for us? So unlike an array, a dictionary is a collection of key value pairs. Uh, so you've got a key, it can be a number or it can be text, and then you've got the item that the key is referring to. So if you think of this like a phone book, uh, you'll look up a name and then I know we don't use phone books anymore, but uh, you could uh, look up a name and then get the details, maybe the phone number, perhaps uh, if it was an address book, the address of uh, that person. Or actually a dictionary itself. If you look up a word, uh, the value you'll, you will get once you look up that word, because there's only one of each word, is you'll get a definition or definitions uh, of that word. So it's a very efficient way to look up uh, val look up values in VBA and the powerful thing about it is you can uh, you don't just need to store things such as strings or integers you can actually store uh, arrays in this uh, dictionary object or you could even store uh, class objects as well so you can unlike arrays which really only store integers and strings you can store absolutely anything in a dictionary let's have a look at how it works so in this example, we're going to populate a dictionary with a list of countries and the population of those countries as a string. Let's step through the code step by step to uh, see what happens. OK, so we're going to step through this line by line. So it's going to be F8 on Windows and Command Shift and I on Mac. So let's begin. First, we're going to do uh, a debug print so this line here just clears the immediate window that we have at the bottom and uh, makes it clear for us to use. So we'll just, uh, we'll just run that, it's clear already. And the first option we have is the compare method. So there are two types of compare method in dictionaries. There's the uh, binary compare mode. So uh, if you had Canada with a capital C and Canada with a lowercase c, they would not be considered the same item. And then you have text compare mode, where if you have Canada with a capital C and Canada with a lowercase c, uh, you'd, they would be considered uh, identical. They'd be considered the same item. So uh, we're actually just going to set the default here uh, as binary compare. And then we're going to move on to actually uh, adding items to the dictionary. So I'm going to set a stop point here now and we're going to add these five items United Kingdom, Italy, USA, Canada, Germany with the populations. So you'll see that it's done using the dot add method. So we'll see first at the top we declared the uh, country as a new dictionary. This is called early binding when we use the new keyword the dec during the declaration. And we're going to use the dot add method and the first argument uh, is going to be the key. So in this case, it's going to be the country. And then the second argument is the value. So if you remember in your mind, the key value pairs. So we're going to add the rest of these and just click play on here. And we've actually added these to, to a uh, dictionary. So first, let's look at the locals window. If you click view locals window, and we'll see here we actually have the dictionary country here and we can actually already drill down into the keys and the items so we want to actually look at the key values here and you'll see we've got the five items and if we open them up we actually see we have the key value pairs you can also just look at the items and look at the keys so you can see here we have the keys and here we have the items and then we're just going to print to the immediate window. Whenever you do debug.print, it prints to the immediate window. And we will just uh, press play on that to the next line. And you'll see there it's printed out uh, the results of 83 million people for Germany. And then we're going to do the uh, country count. So you can use the dot count function to get the count here. So we're going to press play on this and you'll see that we have five items, which is correct. Next, we want to print out all of the results to the immediate window. 
and you can do that using a for each loop. So we're saying for each key, and key we've declared at the top as a variant here, so it can adapt to whatever type is being asked of it. So we're saying for each key in country.keys, please print out debug.print the key, and then the result of that key, so the uh, value in that key. So again, we're going to set a break, break point, so this runs all the way through. So you can left click on the side here in the gray to set gray put, uh, to set break points and then press play to continue the code. So we should get results of all the items, which we do. So we have five items, five countries, and we have the values that go along with them as well. Next, we'll look at replacing one of the values in the key value pairs. So for example, we want to increase the population of the United Kingdom from 66.65 million to 67.5 million. Now you may be tempted to do this line of code here which I've commented out, which I'm now going to uncomment out and actually go back up to do. And you can drag the uh, yellow arrow back to a previous statement if you would like, like I've just done there. So if we did country.add United Kingdom 67.5 million and I press play now for this code to run, it will throw an error. And the error will be this key is already associated with an element of this collection. So we're actually going to click end on that now. And the reason that's happened is that for a dictionary, each key is unique. So we already have the United Kingdom key of and the value of 66.65 million. So what we're saying here is to add it again. And that is a key thing with dictionaries is you cannot replace one key with the same key. So all of the keys are unique and remain unique in a dictionary object. So how do we update the value instead? Let's comment out this code so we don't run that line and we run the next line instead. <clears throat> so I'm going to play this from the beginning and this is how you do it. You simply do the country and then you refer to the key that you want, in this case United Kingdom equals 67.5 million. If I run this to the next line, and then I actually look inside the object itself. So you'll see the first item, which is the United Kingdom, has been updated successfully to 67.5 million. If I want to remove an item, I simply use the dot remove function. So I want to remove Canada from this list. So let's just play this and uh, again, just check the key item pairs here and you'll see that Canada has disappeared. So we've removed that successfully. Finally, perhaps we want to sort these items. So at the moment, they're in an unsorted order. And unfortunately, for dictionary objects, it's not, uh, there's no built-in sort option. This is because, uh, like a, although a, a dictionary and a phone book might be sorted, the point of using a dictionary object is it doesn't matter uh, the order that they're in. You can always find the value you want by looking up the key. But it could be that you want to output this dictionary object onto a worksheet, in which case you might, you might want it to appear in a sorted order. So you do have to use a custom function for this, and there are many examples online, and I'll briefly go through the example that I've used. So we have this function, sort dictionary by key, and it's going to jump to this function, which is below the main block of code that we're doing. And what this does, and I'll go through this in summary as there are examples online that you could use, is first, it adds all the keys to a collection instead of a dictionary. So just a collection uh, list. And then it completes something in this block called the bubble sort with the URL here of how to actually complete the bubble sort from Stack Overflow, where it simply adju adjusts and moves the, item, the keys in the collection until they're in alphabetical order. And finally, what it will do is we'll add the collection to the new sorted dictionary uh, object that we've created. So we'll add the sorted keys to the sorted di dictionary, and then we'll look up the values of those keys from the original dictionary. Finally, we'll return the sorted dictionary uh, at the end of this function. So I won't step through this line by line, 
and please refer to this Stack Overflow question here for more details on how this sort works. So we're going to move on to the next line in the main block here to output the results. So I'm going to press play. And finally, we're going to loop through again to output exactly the same as we did earlier in, in this block. Um, we're going to output the results of the dictionary. So let's press play on this and then see the results in the sorted dictionary here in the immediate window. And you can see now we have Germany, Italy, United Kingdom and USA all sorted in alphabetical order. So we actually replaced the unsorted dictionary with the sorted dictionary in that block of code. Finally, uh, we want to remove all of the items in the dictionary here. So we have all the sorted items and if we complete remove all, it will actually delete these uh, and remove these, which it has done. So these have all been deleted. So there's no more items, key items in this uh, dictionary object, but the, uh, the object itself still exists. So we could do set country equals nothing. So I'm actually going to drag the arrow back up here and FA or command shift I and it will actually remove this from memory if I press play. So you'll see here we have country is the value is nothing. And that ends the subroutine. So what did we do? We created a new dictionary object with the uh, term country. We then added five countries with the populations to this dictionary object. We deleted the, uh, we output the Germany country and then we counted the number of items and then we output all of the items to the debug window. We then updated the United Kingdom's population and then we removed the Canada uh, key value pair. And finally, we sorted the countries and output the sorted countries from the dictionary. So the dictionary object is very powerful as it can contain any type of object in VBA. So for example, if we wanted to expand upon this uh, country and country population, say we wanted more statistics about the country in each key value pair, we could even create a country class or an array list of country details. So population, um, you know, the size of the country and various statistics about the country and then output them all at once and keep them within memory within the dictionary object. You can even have dictionaries within dictionaries. So it can really uh, go down the rabbit hole a little bit on that one. So it's a very powerful object and it's more powerful than, so really the dictionary object builds upon uh, or expands upon the collection object and it is more powerful than the array object. The only downside here is that if you do, for example, start to build classes into uh, the dictionary key value pairs, so the values are classes, uh, eventually you will start to use more memory and this could have a performance impact on your code where something like an array might be a little bit, a little bit quicker to use. So do consider uh, the performance impact of using dictionaries as well, especially if they are using or, or they are containing complex values. So that's how to use the dictionary object. Do you have any ideas of how you would want to use this in your day-to-day -day work? Let me know. Please like and subscribe.